All right, so this person is a professional pool player and you see long-standing effects from that and you'll see that play out. One of the things with this particular gentleman is when you have a long list of symptoms like this, it's better not to tell the doctor the list of symptoms. It's better to tell the doctor, show the doctor the injury, and then ask him, what symptoms do you expect me to have with this? And I'll show you that in a minute. Okay, so here we are looking at you from behind. You can see that the atlas has gone up to the left. One of the issues is that you have a hard time holding the adjustment. And the styloid on the right, when you bring your chin down, it knocks the atlas from right to left, as you can see it is now. And the styloid on the left, when you bring your chin down, it knocks the atlas posterior on that side. So it, it's rotating it and tilting it. Uh, that's what all those years of leaning over a pool table will do for you. And that strong break that you were famous for, I think that's what played out. So when we look at you from the side, you can see this, this is the new cow ligament, and I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, basically from having all that force go through you when your head is in a position, you know, when you have your eye on the ball, as it were. So here's the styloid that has grown down. You can see it from here how it's kind of glancing on the transverse process of atlas. And over here, you can see it's in front, and, it, and they're close. They're real close. You can't bring your chin down. We did ultra pulse wave Doppler ultrasound on you today to find the sweet spot. How far down can you bring your head before you shut down your jugulars? And it's, you can't even be in neutral. You have, you have, you have to have your chin up a little bit just to have any flow going through there. So there we move everything around. And you can see clearly here, I'll bring that up. So you can see these jugulars. Uh, the jugular over here has the atlas pushing against it. So you can see the trans, it's kind of transparent in there pretty quickly. Um, and here, it's obviously when you bring your chin down that the styloids dig into that. Uh, now, obviously this is a CT venogram. And whenever we see the jugulars there, there's also neurological structures that go through there. So that's these right here. Oops. Okay, so there's your atlas. There's your jugular. And there, there's all these nerves running right in front of there. Uh, and do you remember what your styloids look like? They come, they come right across, right through here. So if I run down the list of these nerves, you have the spinal accessory nerve, you have the pharyngeal branch of the glossopharyngeal, you have the superior laryngeal, you have the jugular nerve, you have the pharyngeal branch of the vagus, the carotid body branch of the vagus, the glossopharyngeal nerve, the carotid sinus nerve, which happens to run blood pressure or give the feedback to the brain on blood pressure. So uh, your, your runaway blood pressure could be affected by that. The vagus nerve, uh, the stylopharyngeal branch of the glossopharyngeal, the hypoglossal nerve, the anterior ramus of the first cervical nerve. So really structure affects function. You just show the, show the styloid how it comes across in here, and there's your nerves. Let's get those out of the way. And there you are. So when you bring your head down, you're digging in there. And your symptoms, not to mention that you can't speak, and your horse that are so um, interesting, confounding, they're affecting all the muscles in here of swallowing, all the muscles of, of, of speech, uh, you feel like you're being choked in there along with a whole bunch of other stuff, not to mention the pressure in the head. So if you try to give somebody a whole long list of symptoms, uh, it, it doesn't work very well. That's why it seems to work better if you say, hey, doc, I'm sorry, I don't want to tell you my symptoms right off bat. Look at this. What symptoms do you expect me to have? And then you watch him go in his mind to try to come up with a whole, whole long list of symptoms. Let it come out of his mouth because whoever speaks first might look a little crazy if you don't know the structure. Uh, just saying. Um, okay, so here we have, when you turn your head to the right, the atlas is not coming off of C2 very much. Interestingly enough, and again, I think it's because of this lifetime of you playing pool. You, here we have you, the right atlas goes to the right off of C2. C2 does not turn to the right because of whatever's going on in this facet. The disc is intact. All these other facets showed right rotation. So you're turning, you're turning with your whole neck except for right here on a C2. And then when we see you on the other side, turning atlas is coming off a of C1 the way it's supposed to. Uh, that's kind of stuck also. 
Uh, but all these, all these turn and rotate the way they're supposed to, so you're assuring the burden of motion with that. On the other side, same thing, you turn your head to the left, and this thing just stays stuck in basically extension. Uh, I'm sorry, flexion. So here we have that stuck, and all the other ones turn and rotate just the way they're supposed to. Uh, so that's a very interesting uh, state of affairs. Uh, any questions? The only thing I would ask was, is it potentially the styloid preventing the uh, C2 from moving at all that way? Right. So uh, the truth of the matter is we cannot do a, a, a provocative physical exam on you because of these styloids. The ultrasound, sh your main symptom is that pressure in your head, and you're probably leaking CSF because you have so much pressure in your head. Yeah. So I cannot really do much of an exam to, to flesh out what the C2 facets are doing because these styloids are just wreaking havoc. Yeah. So you get those removed, and then it'll be a different ball game. Heck, when you get those removed, I wouldn't be surprised if that's what's locking you up somehow in here. And once they're removed, that this will start moving correctly. Uh, again, this is a calcification of, of, a, of a ligament. It's supposed to be a rope in here. So those forces you put through your body over time uh, how it's playing out is anybody's guess. Uh, so all this muscles, the muscles are constricted in there. There's fascia constriction. There's all kinds of interesting things going on. Once these are removed, then you'll be able to, for one thing, feel a lot better, and we'll be able to examine you to find the rest of the problem. Do you think at that point, like after the styloids are removed, having the scans again, and then we look at, oh, what does your anatomy look like now? Okay, well, when the stylus come out, he's going to be more mobile. So, mm. all right, so you had a couple prolo treatments. The first two did great. Third one tightened you up too much. And so I, you're going to be, you're, you're going to go back to prolo after this. When these come out, you're going to be a little more mobile. Mm -hmm. We can do redo the scans to see what's moving too much. Because, yeah. uh, uh, again, this is uh, stabilizing, attempting to stabilize from a hypermobile movement or just leaning over a pool table all those years, you're you're loading yourself in a unique way. And that's surely gonna play out in an interesting way. So um, yeah, we can redo the scan after that's gone. Uh, those are gone to find out what's hypermobile and, how, and the extent of it. The good thing is you're older. The older we get, we become <laughs> typically, yeah. we're able to tolerate the styloids removed, being removed and not becoming too hypermobile. Mm -hmm. So your age is helping you in this situation. So it pays to get old. <laughs> and that was a good explanation of why we, a doctor never was able to explain to me why I had the, they call it a floating bone in the back of my neck. Uh, right, that's so the, uh, I can show it to you. It's another ligament uh, calcification issue from bending right. my head sh like that all the time. Yeah, I'll bring it here. We can turn that on for you. Yeah, that was really interesting to hear. Because whenever people would just say he's. And that's it right there. No, oh, I was like, from where? And There's the new cow ligament. So uh, imagine the forces that went through there that made you calcify this ligament. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? No, I think we covered No, everything. this yeah. was great. It was amazing.